This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. What's up, everybody? I'm back for another episode of the Average Savage podcast. Our special guest today is Pepper Persley. Pepper, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me. We're we're making history right now because you're definitely my youngest guest I ever had on at 10 years old. That's awesome. All right. (laughs) So, so let's just go into it. Like how, how did you get into how and why did you get into sports journalism? So growing up, um, I had been a just curious kid and I think, I mean, I'm still growing up obviously, but like when I was younger, I was really curious and I still am. Um, and I was really into sports. I played sports, um, and still do. And, at this point, I really want to continue to. Um, I just, I, yeah, I was curious about basketball more specifically and had the opportunity to interview WNBA player, now um, assistant coach for the Las Vegas Aces, Sugar Rogers. Um, and I just had so many questions that I wanted answered, but I also was realizing that not a lot of people were paying attention to the WNBA. And I was like, why they're so awesome so it was also important to me to highlight them and then um during quarantine I really um started to do more interviews and um it was just because I wanted to bring a smile to people's faces because quarantine was really hard for me and I knew it had to be hard for other people and then there were also really other um important issues that were close to my heart that I wanted to um touch on as well so I did that through my podcast my interview show and yeah I've been doing that since then yeah yeah that's awesome I've been seeing you a lot around that's why I wanted to have you on um so you started at six years old but like what what made you want to like interview people um or like what or what like what was it like did you see like a lot of interviews and you just like learning about people not really. I just had so many questions and I would ask them to my parents and yeah. they wouldn't have the answers. And so <laughs> I had to, I, I, I was like, I have to ask somebody. So yeah. I ended up asking the people who had the answers. I don't know. At six, I didn't really consider an interview. I just thought I get to have my questions answered and that was super awesome for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I think of it more as like actually like a job and a profession and interviewing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you started a uh, dish with pepper during, during quarantine, right? Yep. Yeah. So I, one, I love the name cause it just makes sense. Um, and then, yeah. How did like, who have you, I don't want to, I hate this question myself, but like, who was like, I'll say, who was your top like three interviews so far? Oh, um, that's a good question. I always get the top one and I can never choose. So thank you for giving me more <laughs> options. Um, I think my first interview um, on Dish with Pepper was with Meg McPeak, someone who is um, a true inspiration to me and someone who I consider my big sis. And that was my first interview. So I'll say that one was pretty big. Um, um, And obviously all of my interviews have been really special to me for their separate reasons. Um, But so I would say also interviewing Katie Smith was one of my like first couple of interviews and that was really big because she is really big. Um, so that was awesome. And then I would also say interviewing um, Natasha Cloud. This is so hard. Oh my God. I want to, I just want to list everybody. Um, I would say, um, yeah, Tasha was really awesome. So yeah, I really enjoyed interviewing th- those three, I would say, but obviously um, there are other people like Renee, um, Ari, um, who else? I interviewed Amani Dorsey. So they're, they're like a bunch of other people that I really, I could like pick five different top three. So yeah, but I would say that for today, but they're obviously other people. All right. I like it. Um, so you've been all, you've been all over the place. Like you had interviews with like Sports Illustrated and Bleacher Report and you've done um, different kind of projects with like Nike. So what, what has that whole experience been like knowing that you're like only 10 years old? Um, it's kind of crazy sometimes. Sometimes I just take a moment to step back and think about it. And it's nuts. I mean, just the fact that people have given me so many opportunities, I feel really fortunate to have that. But also, like just the fact that I've been able to have a job at 10, it's kind of crazy. And I feel so fortunate to have parents who support me, friends who support me and people um, 
out in the world of the people I want to cover, like that they are supportive and they don't, I, I don't get a lot of no's. And I feel like I am really fortunate for that. So yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So what, all right. So how do you, how do you balance your, uh, I guess your, your career in your school life? Um, you know, not all of it happens like every day. I do a little bit of journalism every day. Obviously school comes first, but I think it's not actually completely impossible to um, balance. I have a schedule, which I try to um, use, and my parents are really helpful with that, um, just having that balance. I think if it was ever too much for me, I would figure out a way to keep doing it less, keep doing journalism less, or um, stop doing it, which at this rate, I think I can actually keep going, which is super cool to me. Um, but yeah, at this point um, in fifth grade, we don't get too much homework. So I'm able to do some journalism. And um, the weekends I have sometimes, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, it's a challenge, but it's not impossible. Yeah, for sure. And what, what are your, what are your classmates and like your teachers think about all this? Um, it's kind of funny because they all really love it um, and they think that I'm awesome and I'm like I'm trying to convince them that I'm not like world famous and like all the while they still think I'm really cool and I'm really lucky to have friends and teachers who are completely fine with me like sharing what I'm up to um, at school and all that stuff so yeah they're super supportive of me which I love. Yeah that's awesome I'm sure you could teach them a few things too. Um, so I know you play, you play basketball, softball, soccer, and you have a, you're a black stripe and tie, uh, Taekwondo and you play violin. So I'm going to ask you like, wh what's your favorite sport to play? Basketball. All right. And how, okay. how's your, I know you're on a, you're on a team right now. How's it, how's your, how's your team doing? Um, we were just at a pretty big tournament. Um, so, and we won two of our four games, obviously somewhat disappointing, but um, not completely terrible. And it was my first big tournament. So I personally am um, super excited about that, but yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, for sure. And what about um, like, what advice would you give other kids trying to start um, sports journalism or just get in front of the camera or interview other people or just anything? I would say that you can do it. Like it's not impossible and people will be like surprised at first when they hear it and they'll like double back, like I'll go and ask for my media pass and people will be like media. Yeah. Like, so there are going to be times when people are going to tell you no, but there will be a lot of times when people will tell you yes. And sometimes I'll tell you yes, because you're cute and they think that people will like to see you there, but you also, every time you're in a space, you have to prove to people that you know what you're talking about and that you're not just that cute face there. Um, so I would say, yeah, that's my advice, but you can absolutely do it and you can handle it. And it's really important to find people who believe that as well yeah definitely and what yeah what have been some um like roadblocks you being 10 i know sometimes probably you can't maybe even be allowed in places because you have to be like 18 or something like that like what has that been like yeah sometimes there are bedtime challenges um <laughs> sometimes you know it's like a school night like stuff like that um so obviously there's a little bit of a struggle with me before having not been fully vaccinated, but I am now as of yesterday, which is super exciting. Um, so there's that. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes people are just like, oh, a 10 year old. And like, they'll choose not to call on me. And then they'll be like, they'll have to call me because like, there's not that many people there. And they'll, and they'll realize that I know what I'm talking about. But um, in the women's basketball and women's sports world in general, there are a lot of people who think what I'm doing is awesome. And I'm really lucky. I think I'm really lucky. So I know you mentioned Dish with Pepper, but you also have another podcast, The Next She Got Next. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So She Got Next is my podcast for The Next, which is a website that um, covers women's basketball. And shout out to Howard Megdell, who asked me if I would want to be a part of The Next. Um, I've written a couple of articles for the website and I have my weekly podcast. So yeah, I was super amazed to have the opportunity um, to have my podcast and get paid to do it. So shout out to Howard. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it is it weekly or bi-weekly? Yeah. Or? Oh, nice. Bi-weekly. Nice. How did you get the nickname Pepper? 
So before I was born, my dad was convinced I was going to be a girl. And he loved the name Pepper from uh, Marvel's Pepper Potts um, and from a character, I think, a policewoman. Um, so, yeah, he was um convinced that I was gonna be a girl and wanted to call me Pepper and my mom didn't really like it but she caught on and now um I I was like Pepper that's a cool name for a journalist so I went with that and now everybody basically calls me Pepper um and what's your what's your like short-term goal like say your goals for like 2022 and then what's like your long-term goal like what's your ultimately dream um so for 2022, A, I want to be still a journalist. I want to continue to do that um, through sixth grade. Um, I want to definitely continue both of my podcasts and my job. Um, I want to do another Clippers Kids cast, which I did this year. And uh, that was awesome to be able to call an NBA game and maybe call a WNBA game. Um, that's like what, basically my long-term goal is to be able to do that. Um, but you know, I would say just to be able to continue to have amazing opportunities, maybe do something else with Nike, um, definitely the Clippers Kids cast. So yeah, I would say that would be my short-term goal. And then for long-term, I mean, my dream is to play in the WNBA and has been for a pretty long time. But after I retire, I would love to continue my journalism and um, have my own show on ESPN and call WNBA games. All right, I love that um are you ready are you ready for some fun questions yes i am i was born ready i i, I mean i hope i'm ready all right top, what's your top three dream interviews hmm. um i would say serena williams because she's just amazing and a goat um i would say yara shahidi because i think she's super cool and she's paving the way um who else i would say Maybe, yeah, also Zendaya. So those are my, yeah, those are my top three dream interviews. Also, actually, also Kamala Harris. That I'm done now. <laughs> All right, I like that. Um, what, do you, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I like to read and watch TV. Um, I, I like to dance and listen to music. Um, I'm also a really big Marvel fan, so I'm probably watching the latest Marvel show or movie um, in my free time as well. Yeah. Oh, did you see the new Spider-Man? Yeah, I actually saw it um, yesterday in theaters. It was crazy. You liked it? Really good. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't like it. Hmm. <laughs> I had to see your reactions. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, what is, what's your, like uh what's your favorite food i would say sushi i could eat that every right. day. really that's interesting what's your favorite sushi roll um i just like cucumber but pretty plain right. but it's really good all right well i appreciate you coming on and um could you let the listeners know where they could follow you at yeah, so on Instagram, I'm at Pepper Pursley. On Twitter, at Team Pursley. Um, on YouTube, um, Dish with Pepper. And on Facebook, also at Dish with Pepper. So that's where you can find me. Yeah. And on my Instagram page, I have a link tree with a lot of the stuff that I do. So you can check that out too.